Welcome back to this course on textile finishing. So let's see what have we done till now. We were learning about some finishes on wool. One of the properties that we learnt about was the felting in wool which is basically because of the scales on the surface that we see. Because of this, we had one interesting process called the milling process and another process which is opposite to the milling process is shrink resistance finishing process where it is desirable, it is desirable that you could make machine washable woolens so that you do not have to go for dry cleaning. So these were some of the things which we learned about and some of the processes which can be used to do these finishes, particularly the shrink resist finishing. So we have learnt about the machine washable woolens, that is one. One thing which we may like to answer is, do we have easy care woolens as such? So that is what important thing is, does the machine washable means that this has to be in easy care like you wash and use? One is that it would not shrink, the other is that it will be a smooth, nice, beautiful surface. So that is a question which we have to ask, does the anti-crease treatment will lead to such a condition? Or we would need something else, any special finish for wool? That is the question we shall be answering today. So there is a finishing process or processes which come under what we call as setting. That is whether it is a surface which is flat or you have creases like the crease here or pleats if you want to set then what will you do, alright. So one of course is the plain surface, smooth surface which is generally uh, crease less. So setting will come there. One important thing again we are asking is, does wool need extra care for this purpose against creasing and maybe dimensional stability? Why are we asking this question? Because if you remember our fiber which is wool, it is a protein fiber which has alpha helix structure and also it has intermolecular covalent cross links in the form of disulfide linkages. So normally we would expect that uh, wool will be more crease resistant which is true also. So why should anything be done, you know that will be the question which people would like to ask, why should anything be done when already you have intermolecular cross link and that is what should uh, satisfy any type of crease resistance that is required. Let us see if it happens or it does not. So this question you may like to answer from your own experience if you have. Can you use woolens after washing without ironing? jackets or sweaters or cardigans and what have you, would you like to use them without ironing? And can we say wool or woolen fabrics are naturally crease resistant and easy care types? If we answer these questions, generally we may come to the thing no we will have to do some a bit of an ironing before we say well we are good, alright. That means whatever exists as it is may not be sufficient enough to do what you expect let us say from a crease resist 
finished fabric. Therefore, this setting of wool comes uh, as a topic or a finishing thing. So, we will discuss something about what is this setting of wool which already is supposed to have intermolecular cross links. But remember there are many other intermolecular links, their ionic bonds are also there, you have hydrogen bondings also. These bonds can obviously uh, give way whenever wet right and they are abundant in number. So, setting if you talk about there is a relaxation setting you see, relaxation means if there are strains, stresses which are already stored within the fabric or a garment during manufacture or any other for any other reason, they should be released. If you release those stresses, then you can set. So, if you leave the material in cold water for some time, material I am talking about obviously is the wool fabric. In cold water, what will happen? Yes, some of the hydrogen bonds would break. If there is no tension, it can set, that means it can release its energy and be in a comfortable position thermodynamically. But let us say there was, if you remember, a process we discussed some time back called the London shrinkage. That, may, that was exactly the kind of process that you leave the fabrics in a folded form or otherwise for some time in not so tension, tension conditions, free of tension conditions, that is tension free conditions and hope all these stresses will be relaxed and released and the fabric will be relaxed and so it will be set in some sense. What it means it will not like to go to any other state because it is probably in the lowest energy state. But when you set anything in cold water and you wash it again, you might find that whatever set was there, it, it gets washed off because when you wash that is also cold water. So, first setting which was done in the same condition, if the another condition is provided during washing then the previous set could be undone. So, then people thought maybe if we do this setting in hot water where more opportunity for rearrangement, intermolecular forces rearrangement can be permitted. In that case, maybe it would behave better. So, it was seen that if you set something, not something, sorry, the wool fabric in hot conditions, hot water, then whatever setting was done in the hot water, it would remain as it is if you wash in the cold water. So, normally what you are saying, we do not wash, why should we wash in hot water? If you if we can do in the at a room temperature or cold water conditions. So, if you set something in hot water condition and wash in the normal temperature, then you might find that the setting stays, right? You understand? If you set in the cold water and wash in the cold water, it goes off. If you set in the hot water which could be let us say 60 degrees, 80 degrees or whatever or maybe boil, then at a lower temperature if you wash, it stays. But if some process requires higher temperature washing, then you may find that part of the history which was created uh, during this process of hot water setting can be changed. Then came another state that if you suppose do the same thing 
in steam. Steam obviously is above 100 degrees centigrade if it is atmospheric, but it has got many things. What the things it has? One, the steam has a latent heat. So when it strikes the changes that it can bring about compared to let us say water at 100 degrees centigrade versus a steam at 100, 100 degrees centigrade, the amount of energy that can be transferred from the steam will be much higher because steam contains what? The energy due to the latent heat condition, all right, you understand? If that is true, so anything which would be set in the steam, this is what people observed then it can be washed even at a higher temperature, certainly at a low temperature, at room temperature, the setting would remain for a long period. That is what was the first observation, shall we put it this way. Based on this discussion that we have had, a process, a finishing process or a pre-finishing process, what we call it for woolen fabrics was designed and that was called crabbing, okay. very funny name but that is what it is. It is a pre-setting process, pre-setting means there is not a final process, normally we believe that all the processes which come in the finishing which we are discussing would be approximately the final processes, but crabbing is one of the interesting processes for woolens, a pre-setting process that means it is setting but not the final process. So certain amount of required set, required set, it may not be permanent but it is quite good depends on what you are doing. So you like that kind of a thing to happen. During this process this is one of the objectives. Also, if the fabric must have been processed in one way or the other, the dimensions are not right. So, if you have to stretch, you have to extend in whichever direction. So, you can do that and make a possibly a dimensionally stable fabric. So, that is what will be the aim of this type of a process. Now, the conditions of this process which is crabbing can be changed based on whether the fabric is going to be further processed in an open width form or in rope form. You understand what is rope form? So you collect the fabric and then make a rope of it and then process. If that is what you need to do, for example, you may like to do covering, you may like to do dyeing in the rope form, then maybe you will say the crabbing will be required and maybe the conditions will be slightly more uh, higher, for example, more uh, time, more temperature could be one of those things. So, more stringent. And of course, the process, this process by itself is done in an open width form. Okay. And what is the process? Open width form, you treat in a water which is 80 degrees to boil maybe. And then this process is after putting in the hot water, you may like to pass the fabric around a drum which is heated, which may be held, the fabric may be held by an endless blanket. The blanket could be a rubber blanket also. The idea is that it should be pressed against the hot cylinder and fabric as it goes over and over that heated drum, 
it gets set and of course as it comes out you must cool this fabric then you're done so cooling is important also so if let us say heating makes some changes at whatever level at molecular level intermolecular level at the intermolecular interaction level they must be stabilized and if you want to stabilize then after this there must be a cooling process so this is what a sequence so you have open width fabric treat in the hot water pass around the drum in that condition which is also heated pressed by a blanket so the fabric from one end to the other end can go as the drum is rotating and finally you cool right it's just a line diagram of a continuous crabbing machine so what is this let's say the fabric is coming from here this is the fabric and it goes through a trough which has got hot water this drum is rotating in this way so fabric after this goes through this goes in and then this is the blanket and this is the drum heated of course so this endless blanket also goes along all over the drum and then gets out while well, the fabric gets out like this and goes through let's say an environment which may have let's say cold water for cooling purpose and this endless blanket keeps on moving purpose of the endless blanket is to put pressure the heating can be done of the drum by steam remember the steam is not heating the fabric steam is heating the drum so drum surface is hot all right so drum surface is hot which is being heated by steam the fabric along with let's say an endless blanket enters a pressure is created also so that the surf the the one of surface becomes flat and the fabric remains heated for some time and then through a cold water trough it can go out and so there may be different types of sequences but approximately something like this in a continuous scraping machine you may see and so this is in a way a setting process hot water mainly okay now another term which i am just introducing at the moment is called the permanent setting remember one thing in life there is nothing permanent but it is a relative term relative means that if something which has been set permanently if you normally wash go through a various laundry cycles uh, you would see the same stability same surface structure being maintained for a certain number of laundry cycles okay it's not infinite 
So that way permanent obviously means a limited kind of a permanency. That's what we're going to talk about. Steam is very interesting. We discussed a few uh, minutes ago that you can actually do the setting through steam because it's not only temperature is higher, but it has additional heat stored because of the latent heat. So, have you gone visited a beautician who is doing hairdo like you set your hair by putting a helmet or headgear which passes steam? Scary condition, right? I mean, you get scalded, but that's controlled one. But remember, this hair is also protein and actually keratin, just like wool. So, whatever the steam does here, so you people get the style, styling done by the steaming process. And of course, you must have seen a steam press, all right, where the fabric woolen is compressed and the steam goes through steam press. Then the people understand that if you do steam press, woolens get set better. You can put creases, you can make a flat surface, so whatever you want. So we would like to answer this question today. All right. What does the steam do? So one thing which obviously we can expect, we can expect steam can also help in reducing the shrinkage due to relaxation. That means if you put your fabrics in tensionless condition and steam them, tensionless condition and steam them. So whatever stresses are there they would be released and so you will achieve a position of a low energy position which is more stable but also it can lead to another thing which now we can call it as a permanent setting permanent the way we define the permanency what can be achieved in this kind of processes like steaming process. One dimension stability for sure that is one of the ways, one of the reasons why we have started this process. You want to keep a flat surface, a flat surface, smooth and crease free surface. One may be interested in permanent pleats and creases like a skirt for example, very pleats are there, you may like the pleats to actually appear as it is or creases for example on a jacket. So unlike for example just a crease resistive addition, you also may be interested in creasing and creasing should be permanent like you when you wash around the crease will still appear to be there. That could be one of those things which can be achieved by steaming. After washing also this type of a condition would be visible. Okay. So now crease or no crease, why the crease forms or why something is crease resistant. So we already have cross links. So why would the cross links change their positions? You see, in the earlier case we talked about, let us say cellulose, there are a lot of hydrogen bonds that can break, of course, but covalent bonds are stronger. So, if they do not break, why would the original position, whatever the position was, change? The fiber itself has inbuilt covalent cross links. So, why would it change, even if, let us say, I am interested in setting new, setting condition or position like crease actually or a pleat, 
I want to do pleats. So why would the pleat form at all? Because unless and until you have this covalent bond broken. If this covalent bond is broken, only then you can expect a new position, new configuration will be set, right? So this is not the condition, for example, in the case of cellulose, where the creases can easily be formed. You can iron, of course, can go off. That's why you said we will do cross-linking. Here, there's already cross-linking. So what, what's happening now? Whether they have any role to play, we like to check. So what happens during steaming? This question is what we want to answer. Do all the covalents bond break? Actually, people try to do some theoretical analysis. The strength of a polar bond like hydrogen bond or any other van der Waals force is very small, very weak bond these are. And so even if they are large in number or whatever happens, when you put a crease, when you bend, you crush, they can break and form also at new places because there are a lot of hydroxyl groups. So you break from one, make somewhere else. And so creases can form. But here we have covalent bonds, and these covalent bonds, how will they break? If suppose the energy required in the steam was so that all the covalent bonds, which are the which are the disulfide bonds. If they all break and then reform somewhere else at a new position, let us say the pleats where you have created, then in that case, the total energy required will be so high that actually you can have a breakdown of the primary chain itself. It does not happen in steam. So they found there is another mechanism which is applicable and that is called thiol interchange mechanism. That is very interesting. This type of thing obviously does not happen in other fibers or other kind of cross links. This happens in wool. So what is the wool thiol exchange? That this is let us say this. So this is the kind of link that you have. Right. Now, what, what we are expecting is either this link breaks completely, in that case all these links will break and then the energy required to break all these links and of course when they form whatever happens, happens, reform, then the new positions can be set. But what is found that the steam would not be able to provide that much energy where all such bonds can be broken because at that kind of energy requirement, if at all, then main chain itself can break, right? So a new mechanism, we call it now thiol interchange. Why does it happen? Let us say this is roughly a representation of a native wool, you know, a virgin wool. So you may have remembered that this formation takes place as the wool fiber is growing and that process is keratinization. So originally you have thiol groups, okay. The thiol groups combine to make a disulfide linkages during this process of keratinization itself. But when you look at it, it is quite possible statistically that all the thiol groups are not reacted. And so some of the thiol groups may be free like this. Very simple representation, but this is how we are now representing this at a molecular level. 
So there may be many thiol groups which have already reacted and made a disulfide linkage, but some in the virgin wool may be just free. What happens let us say when we stretch, let us say in one direction we stretch. So we stretch this fiber, let us say this fiber has been stretched. Okay. So these bonds also get stretched, so the direction has changed, so they are becoming in this direction. Now what happens? So they are strained also because you are stretching, so there is a strain. So normally if you leave the strain, they will like to go back. But what you are doing? You are also steaming at the same time, giving some energy. So what happens that these two are a free thiol group versus one other sulfur, they may come little closer and after all you are stretching, so one of them is there, the other one has been pulled down and so they may come very close to each other compared to the other sulfur end which is making the link. So what happens is called a thiol exchange, you see we told you everything including covalent bonding is a contract. If a better situation comes, the contract can be changed from one body to the another, one group to the other one. So it is possible now that this, these two start making a link, these two start coming closer then and like this and like this and then this happens and this free thiol group which was here now is here. This is called thiol interchange. Are you getting thiol interchange? And because of this, now the wool, whichever the fiber it was, or the fiber and the yarn, they all are now in a new position. So, this is what exactly we thought earlier that you have some covalent bond or whatever bond in the first position, you change the position like you bend it, crease it, then steam it, then they change their position like this. This process requires much less energy compared to the assumption that if you break all these bonds and then all these bonds reform later, right. So, it is during steaming this type of thing happens. Therefore, a steaming for woolens is a very, very acceptable process. Okay? So, one of the uh, other process which is used uh, for the wool finishing is called decatizing. Decatizing. What is the objective? Objective is as we discussed what the steam can do, dimensional stability so that it does not change its thing, smooth and wrinkle free finish and if do very nicely maybe it can give you a bit of a lustrous thing also like your steam iron uh, fabric too much then you will see well it becomes lustrous, you may not like it so you say well do it softly. If you say no I want a lustrous surface then you may do it under a little more pressure and steam then you can get luster also. But more important is you can get dimensional stability and form, form also, right. So if it is wrinkle free appearance is one form, the other could be pleats and creases, right. How do we do that? Obviously steaming. So you have wool fabric and it is interleaved with another fabric which is relatively more dimensionally stable. Okay. So the 
wool fabric is interleaved. The other fabric could be polyester or cotton or polyester cotton, whatever type, relatively more stable dimensionally, right? We're not talking about surface. And this this bilayer, okay, one fabric which is a woolen fabric, the other is the other fabric together are wrapped, right? Keep wrapping them over a perforated drum under some control tension. So, when you have control tension, dimensions are being set, okay. The wool fabric because let us say more layers you create, the wool will not touch the wool fabric itself, but it will be another between them will be another layer of a different fabric, okay. So, you create some layers and then steam. The time let us not worry about, it could be 10 minutes or less than 10 minutes or more than 10 minutes depending upon what kind of machines that you may have, but the question is that. And, and how many layers you have made, you know, the, the layers are less, and less time could be required, but the time. So, the, the process can be finished actually in, in very less time also, in case for example, you just have one layer and other layer. Have you seen people doing steam pressing? They put a wet fabric on the garment, woolen garment and then press it the steam generates there and then sometimes or you may also iron on a wet fabric rather than spraying just to ensure that the wool does not get harmed, okay. But steam obviously has a relatively controlled temperature. Timings can be different and then cool. So, the same process steam and then cool, heat and cool that will make you uh, think so it is kind of a final finish. Uh, this Ticketizing will be final finish more or less because you have steamed and uh, you have controlled your dimensions. But this process decatizing will give you only flat creaseless surface, okay. This process is not going to give you pleats. So, for pleats you will have to do something else like a steam press, okay or a crease you do something else because there is garments, this is fabric. A fabric which is to be finally sold out is supposed to be in the flat form, right. So, sometimes this process is also called blowing, you know, because you are blowing steam into something, something what? A perforated drum, so this is a perforated drum. So, what you are doing is, let us say you have uh, one fabric okay, being uh, rolled so you keep rolling the fabric onto this, but not just the drum, but you also have along with it let us say another fabric which is not woolen, uh, okay, okay, let us say this is the fabric also moving. So, you have layers over a perforated drum. So, and then you inject steam, the steam would come out. So, it could be a batch process. So, you can have a situation where first you make a roll and then after you have made the roll, you can steam. After you have done the steaming for whatever period that you have, then you can suck in cold air. This is the advantage of the perforated drum. So, if you inject steam from inside, it will go out. Some pressure will be created because you have wrapped under a tension, many layers may be. And then you keep it for some time like this. 
you may also have a situation that if you are not satisfied in one one go then you may take the same fabric and wrap it on a different roller exactly the same way right okay so you have those two fabrics again unrolled from the other one and rolled onto the other roller and steam out and later cold air in so you wrap on one roller then wrap on the other roller and the whole thing like you had jigger you know so on one roll there is a first the fabric then it passes through some liquor and goes to the other one and you want to repeat the same cycle this can go this type of thing can go twice at least on these decatizing machines which obviously finally will give you a flat surface creaseless smooth surface so depending upon what kind of fabric you have the surface could be more smooth or little fluffy but dimension control will be there it's not likely to shrink very easily because you may have done other process also which is called the anti shrink treatment and this is the setting so there are two different things in the anti shrink you have something to do with the scales in the setting you have something to do intermolecular not just surface intermolecular thiol exchange thiol interchange if takes place then you will get this setting okay now this question somebody may like to ask is this steam setting reversible or is permanent so the question of permanency now is coming here is this same steam setting where what has happened the covalent bonds which are the disulfide linkages have exchanged their position with the other thiol groups which may be free and new condition has been created is this process reversible or permanent what do you think so the process is reversible if you steam it again you make a pleat steam it press it it's good you wash it you'll see that if you next time flatten it out again steam it and press it the pleats will go why because again you still had something called a free thiol group somewhere remember at the end of setting you still had some free thiol group if you do the reverse this exchange or interchange can still take place true so is it reversible yes so what do we do people suggested many things one of the thing people suggested was if suppose we block block thiol groups which are free so if we block free thiol groups by some reaction by anything by i mean by compound an aryl or alkyl compound 
then this will be blocked. If this group gets blocked, then it will not be available for interchange. That can lead to some additional permanency because if breaking all the bond and then doing exchange will be requiring more energy and so you may actually think that well this is not it. So, you can block right if you block. Other interesting thing which people also talked about was can we create new links new links means like in cotton we created those ether based links by the cross linking agents if you create new links which are not the same then maybe you can do something so one of the things people suggested was that you take wool fabric subjected to a reduction process. So, what the reduction process will do? Hmm? If you have wool and this is the disulfide linkage, by reduction process you will convert it to free thiol groups. By using reducing agents, ammonium thioglycolate, sodium bisulfite, some of these are reducing agents and reduction can be done actually at room temperature also. If you use that, then you can create free thiol groups. After that, if you react it with this compound, then you create a new bond. What is this? You had disulfide linkages, you do the reduction, you get free thiol groups. If you react with a compound like ethylene dibromide, you create a new link. Now, how does this help? This new link is not between S sulfur and sulfur, okay. The SS bond is weaker compared to C S or S C bond. The carbon sulfur bond is stronger than the sulfur sulfur bond covalent, both are covalent, okay. So, this bond is now new bond, uh, this bond is now a new bond and so in between of course, there is a carbon carbon. So, they are stronger bonds. So, when you now subject it to let us say further steaming, this bond will not break, there is not, it is not going to participate in whatever called the thiol interchange. Thiol interchange will not work. thiol interchange will not work. So, in some sense by either blocking the free thiol groups or by creating new links, you may be able to do a more durable permanent setting of wool. Okay. Does this make sense? Okay. So, something you may like to learn yourself okay, at your own leisure, try to learn more about what is Hercocet process, little more detail if you have interest. There is something called carpet wool, obviously it is a coarser wool, you might like to learn about it, what kind of wool, what types of wool are called the carpet wool, what is different 
in them compared to let's say a merino wool where are they grown something you may like to understand uh, this i am sure you know but maybe you like to revise why are the woolen warm is it because of their thermal conductivity or something else you may like to talk about it keratin for that matter uh, got two structures alpha and beta structures of the keratin what exactly they are you may like to say and why they are why do they have these kind of structure that also you may like to revise or learn on your own is that okay so what have we learned today we have learned today setting of wool this can be done in hot water which is stable in washing in the cold water hot water cold water permanent setting in some sense can be done by steaming because steam temperature and energy is at higher level and washing can be done at lower temperature so it can be permanent in that sense but steam setting is reversible this also we learned but if you want to make it more durable then what do we do create new cross links new type of cross link even using the so called disulfide linkages so we finish this class and next class we take one more topic on wool which is the moth proofing of wool till then all the best enjoy see you in the next class